You're watching Eye on Africa. I'm James Creedon. Here are our headlines this evening. The International Criminal Court has dropped its arrest warrant for Ivory Coast's former First Lady Simone Bagbo. Uh, this in relation to post-election violence that killed thousands of people a decade ago. The UN Security Council has extended an arms embargo on the Central African Republic for 12 months. The country's security situation remains precarious. And we'll take a look at a drive-in cinema in Johannesburg, an atmospheric way for film buffs to watch a movie and stay protected amid the pandemic. Thank you for watching. I'm James Creedon. Now we start in Ivory Coast and the decision by the International Criminal Court to drop its arrest warrant for the former First Lady Simone Bagbo. This follows the ICC's acquittal of her husband, ex-president Laurent Bagbo, for crimes against humanity. All this dating back to a civil war in 2010-2011. Laurent Bagbo returned from exile to his homeland on the 17th of June and in a sign of reconciliation with his political enemy, he met with President Alassane Ouattara earlier this week. Reconciliation is not on the horizon, however, for Laurent and Simone Bagbo with divorce proceedings underway. Now, here's more from France 24's Hanan Ferjani in Abidjan. This announcement is a relief for ex-First Lady and co-founder of the Ivorian Popular Front Party, Simone Bagbo. Unlike former President Laurent Bagbo, she was never handed over to the International Criminal Court by the Ivorian authorities. After being sentenced at home in 2015 to 20 years in prison for undermining state security, Simone Bagbo was eventually released two years later. According to her lawyer, this decision made by the ICC is opening a new world of possibilities for the political figure. Since she was released in 2018 following an amnesty order by President Alassane Ouattara, she's been able to freely pursue all her political and private activities in Ivory Coast. She was not hindered by the Ivorian government at all. Now this decision is a great relief. Mrs Bagbo can now freely travel the world. Moving forward, her office will be able to organize private and political trips for her across the globe. There you have it. Ange Rodrigue Jadjé is transparent about his client's intention to take full advantage of her recovered freedom of movement. His lawyer also made a point of reminding us that Simone Bagbo remains an influential political figure beyond the borders of Ivory Coast. Uh, to the Central African Republic next, where in a bid to prevent rebels from uh, getting their hands on weaponry, an arms embargo has been extended for a further year by the UN Security Council. France's ambassador to the UN said that the country's situation is deteriorating with a very worrying amount of violence and violations of human rights and international humanitarian law. Now, since December, the army has taken back significant amounts of territory from rebels, aided by 12,000 UN peacekeepers, also Rwandan and Russian troops. But the conflict has displaced, displaced rather hundreds of thousands of people uh, earlier this year, food insecurity also affecting about half of the country's population. The UN Security Council has renewed the sanctions on heavy weapons in the Central African Republic. Uh, France, the United States and the United, United Kingdom believe that Bangui is unable to store, control and prevent uh, these weapons from falling into the wrong hands. The doubts of uh, these Western powers are reinforced by a recent report by UN experts uh, that detailed the violation of human rights in the country perpetrated by the rebels uh, of the CPC but also by the National Army and their Russian allies during the counter-offensive. Uh, the re-elected President Touadéra and his government pleaded for the withdrawal of sections, uh, which, according to them, limits the National Army and its allies uh, in the fight against the rebels. An opinion that's shared by uh, diplomatic allies of the CER, such as Russia, uh, China and Angola. These countries were asking for the removal or at least for a more flexible embargo. Some artillery has uh, appeared in the list of authorized weaponry, a uh, small success for the CR government. The fighting has continued in the country in recent weeks. The massacre of 13 young civilians in the northwest of the country on July 21st has sparked many reactions and investigations are underway. The UN calls on the government to conduct an impartial investigation. Clément Di Roma there. Now, many Somalians are struggling with the effects of drought for several months now. Rural, com rural communities are destitute in some cases with livestock dying in large numbers because of a lack of grazing pastures. Now, the UN and Red Cross are warning they may not be able to cope with the growing humanitarian crisis. Camina Lek is more. It's an arid landscape set to become even drier due to global warming. 
These herders are on the front line of the climate crisis. The east of Africa is heating up almost three times faster than the rest of the planet. And this year has seen a period of prolonged drought in Somalia. The pastures to feed these herds have dwindled and they have nothing left to eat. In the past three decades, extreme weather in the East African country has increased threefold, from droughts to floods, meaning vulnerable communities don't have enough time to recover from one crisis before they're hit by another one. The United Nations estimates that by the end of the year, at least 3.4 million people will be impacted by drought, and almost 400,000 are expected to be internally displaced. Somalia is ranked as one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change in the world, and the UN warns of a growing funding shortfall as the humanitarian crisis continues to worsen. Time now for some other news stories from across Africa. Tunisia's judiciary has opened an investigation into four members of the Islamist Ennahda party. This follows street clashes on Monday outside the parliament, a day after President Kais Sayed ousted the prime minister and suspended the legislature. Ennahda called the move a coup. In Ethiopia, part of a, co a convoy of 200 aid trucks that had been held up on its way to the war-torn Tigray region have now been allowed to leave. The World Food Programme had earlier warned that its food stocks in the region would run out by today, Friday. Over 150 trucks had been held up pending security clearances. Around 5 million people are in need of humanitarian assistance in the region with 400,000 living in famine conditions. France has cleared the extradition of François Compoiré. He's the brother of Burkina Faso's former president and is wanted in his home country in relation to the murder of a prominent journalist. Norbert Zongo was murdered in 1998. Burkina Faso judiciary suspects that François Compoiré may have ordered that hit. French police arrested him at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris in October 2017, following an international arrest warrant. Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, has said slow vaccination in his country is as a result of vaccine nationalism, or richer countries buying up vaccine supplies. This comes as the health minister announced all public gatherings are to be banned for a month due to rising COVID-19 cases. A nationwide curfew between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. is to be strictly enforced. Other measures include places of worship being told to strictly impose guidelines, enforcing a third of usual capacity. To Algeria next and the COVID situation there. Following a, a surge of cases linked to, to the Delta variant, hospitals are faced with shortages of oxygen. Now, while the authorities try to speed up imports of oxygen, locals are having to be resourceful in the meantime. Emerald Maxwell reports. These Algerians are waiting for oxygen tanks handed out by a private company. The resource has become scarce in the country's hospitals, while it's critical for COVID-19 patients. This would have been an unimaginable scene just two weeks ago, when Algeria had more than enough oxygen to meet its needs and even donated some to Tunisia, which had a serious shortage. But the spread of the Delta variant and a slackening of preventative measures has sent cases and hospitalizations soaring. To relieve congested hospitals, new health facilities are being opened. The authorities also want to accelerate the vaccination drive. Less than 6% of people have so far received their first dose. <laughs> Restrictions have been tightened in Algeria since Monday, 
with a 10-day curfew imposed in 35 of the country's 58 prefectures. Leisure facilities and gyms are also closed and people are banned from accessing the beach. To South Africa now for residents of Johannesburg uh, who have been missing going to the cinema now have another option. A new drive-in cinema has been set up there. Uh, the vintage solution to a modern problem is a hit with audiences who want to stay safe and some are enjoying the novelty and nostalgia of the throwback. Let's take a look. The show must go on, even in the middle of a pandemic. These outdoor screenings on a rooftop car park in Johannesburg give audiences a chance to catch the latest releases without catching coronavirus. You've got your own little bubble, in a sense, in your car where you can just be comfortable, you can bring your own snacks, whatever you want to eat. For others, the appeal is the nostalgia. I was so excited on the way here. I was absolutely thrilled because the last time I went to a drive-in, I was like three, so I can barely remember it. Cinema chain Stir Kinnikor is hoping these screenings will provide a vital boost to the ailing sector. Africa's largest cinema group, it was forced to file for bankruptcy protection in January after its theatres were closed for much of 2020. It's been subject to curfews and limits on audience numbers ever since. The firm says it's using these screenings to judge whether or not the business can be rescued. The, the fear there is that if you don't come to the cinema or if you don't watch a movie on the big screen for a, a prolonged, uh, protruded uh, length of time, you may never come back. You'll find alternative inter entertainment. There is some hope on the horizon, as millions more doses of vaccine are set to arrive in South Africa in the coming days, after what has so far been a slow vaccine rollout. OK, that's all for this edition of Iron Africa. Thank you for watching. Do stay tuned.